What's up guys, Winter Kills here coming at you with a brand new deck profile. This is probably going to be one of the last Mermel deck profiles for a while um, since DDD uh, structure is on the way. Very, very close now. Getting closer every passing day. Um, really hyped for that. I'm going to be mainly just like tunnel visioning with just DDD. Um, as I don't play this deck uh, in competitive um, like settings anymore, um, once the DDD structure deck comes out, I'm going to just be playing DDD exclusively trying to get good with that deck um, and if you notice this video um, is being shot in 4k so if you want to watch this video in 4k uh, feel free to do so um, it's gonna look nice and crispy but if your internet's not that great I suggest not because it might not load um, but yeah without further ado we're gonna go ahead and get into the video and this is the um, featuring the uh, the Zulkin build of Mermails so yeah we'll get to that combo at the end but anyways, without further ado, we play Triple Megalo, of course, standard for any Mermel deck, really. Um, even up till this point, I think Triple Megalo is just the way to go. Um, wins you games, you need the discard outlet, so uh, that's why I like to be Megalo. And then three Teus, uh, gotta play three Teus. Most, like, least cost-effective Mermel that gets you the most out of it, especially if you discard a Dragoons off this. Uh, this and Dragoons is just always insane. Uh, Mermel, Abyss Pike, and Gund. Uh, I like this little package. I'd probably play a second Pike if I had another super rare one. But right now I think I'm just going to stick with a 1-1. One and, one. and that's the only Mermels I play. It's just these 8. Uh, the Pike, Gund, 3, Teus, 3, Megalo. And I really do like that engine. Smaller engine, but I like it that way. And then I play the 1 Moulin Glacia. Of course, gotta play the Moulin. Uh, it's a staple, really. Um, and then moving on, we play three Neptibus, the Atlantean Prince, of course, star of the show. Uh, gotta play three Prince. If you're not playing three Prince, I kind of question you, uh, and I don't trust you. Um, but you gotta play three Prince, uh, of course. Then three Heavy Infantry. Uh, I like Heavy Infantry at three. Pendulums are a thing right now. Uh, a lot of face-up pendulum scales you can hit with this, so I will really do like three infantry. Although playing two is not bad, I definitely would consider cutting the the third one for something else. I don't know what it would be though. That's just like my biggest predicament is like what would I add in place of it? Maybe a third aqua spirit since I cut down on cut down on aqua spirit now playing two. Uh, but I still like the three heavy infantry. It always comes in clutch helps to clear big fields. Um, two dragoons, of course. Two marksmen. Uh, playing Book of Eclipse, so this card has a lot more utility. If you Book of Eclipse your field, you can use this card a lot more if they don't have a lot of setback row. Um, so that's it for the Atlanteans. And then for the rest of the monsters, one Deep Sea Diva, of course. Two Aqua Spirits to help make rank fours a lot faster. And then we've got two Max Seas. Um, Max Seas is just a great card right now, and I definitely want to keep playing in here. Um, so since this is like a bit of a different build, and it can go first, um, but it's really, it really doesn't need to go first. That's the thing about this build. Like, going first and opening up the combo would be ideal, but the deck doesn't have to go first the way it's built. That's the unique thing about this build, is that it doesn't change the way that the deck necessarily plays. It just changes how the extra deck options be able to make a lot more explosive plays. That's what I really like about it. Um, but, I don't know, Aqua Spirit could get cut technically since I'm playing less strength fours. Um... I don't know, because I'm only playing two rank fours right now, believe it or not. And these technically aren't necessary, but I guess you could play, if you have desires, maybe play two desires in place of this and just not play Aqua Spirit. Um, but I guess it really doesn't matter. It's just player preferences that, at that point. Um, but if you don't have instant fusion, this card is obviously really good to make rank fours. Like, per se, if you have a pike, discard uh, like an infantry or something, and then you summon this, and that can help you make your rank four if you don't see your instant fusion. So that's what those are good for. Uh, so that's it for the monsters. We'll go to the spells next. We have tr three instant fusion, three copies of instant fusion. Still got to max out on three instant fusion. That'll probably never change unless, of course, Norton gets banned. But then I guess we can play rare fish, so I don't know. Uh, triple more, I agree. A lot of water monsters. Want to draw into the better hands that you can. Uh, hopefully you draw into that combo if it does happen. Um, two Book of Eclipse. Like I said, I was playing Book of Eclipse. I just like this better than Kaiju's right now. Uh, helps out, like, Magic Specters and stuff. And I guess Kaijus do too, but like this can out a whole field of Magic Specters, whereas a Kaiju could only clear one. Uh, Book of Eclipse is cool. I guess it's not entirely necessary though, maybe side deck choice, but I don't know, I'm still maining too. 
double twin twister um, siding the third I don't want to play three of these right now I think two's fine um, I don't know I think two's definitely fine uh, one ragaki one upstart one one for one and one of the scale of Mizuchi to wrap up the, the uh, spells and then the last two cards I'm playing is a vanities and a warning why am I playing traps again because Zulkin the main reason I wanted to play traps is because I just want to have more cards uh, to set just in case I do get the Zulkin out and these cards in general are just good cards being able to make a strong first turn board or just flipping vanities on your opponent is always a good thing to do because it usually wins you the game um, next we have the extra deck where, where you'll see a lot of changes uh, Mermel, Biscayos, Dweller, and then the Shark, uh, and then the last two are two totally awesomes. So usually you can protect the Bahamut Shark anyways to go into the second Toad. Um, I love having the second Toad. I was so skeptical to start, like, I always thought this was the ratio, but this, this is the ratio. I really do like having the option for a second Toad, and I think it's definitely a must in the deck. Unless, you only have one Toad, of course, and just play the one Toad and the one Shark, but... I really like the two-toed one shark. Next, we've got Synchros. So we play Zulkin, Trish, Crystal Wing, Alt or uh, Omega. I added the Omega. Just picked up an Omega, getting my extra day, extra deck game back on point. Playing Omega again. I really do like this card in here because if you can go Trish, Mulan, and somehow make this in the same turn with like I don't even know, but it, it could happen. I've had turns actually where I guess this is a better example. I don't know what I'm talking about making Trish and this in the same turn with Moon. That'd be insane. Um, but I guess I've had game. I because the other night I went to a locals and I dropped Moon and I had this on field as well to take that extra card out of the hand during um, you know my turn or their turn when they go to do something, just knock a card out of their hand. They start with even less card advantage. Um, so definitely good in here. I, I've I've never like had. The, the the want to play another level 8 synchro in here that wasn't obviously crystal wing for this, this extra deck sake um, but I've never really wanted to play level 8 because I've just never had like a solid level 8 to go into but Omega definitely takes the cake and playing Aqua Spirit you can return back your banished uh, water monster so that, does, that always helps out too uh, Black Rose Moonlight Dragon Coral Dragon and Stardust Charge Warrior and Tasunoko uh, these two are viable or not viable but uh, important for the uh, the Zulkin part because you're gonna be using these two of course Synchro into Zulkin which I'll go into the combo in just a moment and I'm playing one Norden and one Rare Fish because um, you will need a Norden for the main combo but if you can end up making uh, use your instant fusion again in the game to make a Rare Fish with like a, a Pike or a Dragoons that'll definitely help out I really do like Rare Fish in here um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and organize everything and we'll come back and uh, do the combo for you guys Alright guys, so onto the combo portion of this video The only thing you need for this combo is just a two card combo that leads to an insane board Deep Sea Diva and Instant Fusion and then for the sake of like making it a little more realistic I'm not just gonna give myself like extra cards um, That I pick I'm just gonna draw three random cards because this on its own obviously could go for the Crystal Wing Zulkin and Mulan play, but you still need a card to set, and that's the only like issue that I found. But you do get two draws in the process of making this field off of Zul or not Zulkin off of Charge Warrior and Coral Dragon, um, so you do have two extra chances to, of course, draw into something that you can set. And if you can summon a Megal at any point in this turn as well, you just search a card to set anyways. Because um, fuck Mizuchi, <laughs> that card is so annoying to deal with, the ruling and everything. So you can just set it, you know, not even use it. You can use it to get a Crystal Wing instead because Crystal Wing is nicer than Mizuchi in my opinion. But anyways, that's a different story for a different time. But So we got Deep Sea Diva and Instant Fusion. We'll just draw into three random cards here. One for one, Moulin Glacia and Aqua Spirit. So that's actually interesting um, because we opened the Moulin, uh, which we were going to search anyways. You don't need to open Moulin for this combo, but if you do, it just saves you time, I guess. And you can just add something else in place of Moulin. So you go, obviously, uh, Deep Sea Diva. Pray to God they don't have a, uh, an Ogre or a Veiler, because um, then you're going to start crying. Um, but that that's no, that's normal in Yu-Gi-Oh! sometimes. Anyways, uh, you want to go for your Neptibus, obviously. And then you want to send Dragoons, of course. And then Dragoon sends that. Dragoon sends that. Uh, you want You need to add Marksman for this. Um, so normally you would just add Marksman and Moulin off this, um, but since we already opened Moulin, we will just add... 
I guess I'll add a Megalo. That way we can summon a Megalo afterwards. All right, so now we're at this point. So basically we're gonna synchro into our Tatsunoko. Tatsunoko major key in this combo. And then from here, we will use Tatsunoko's effect to use the synchro material from hand. Of course, it's gonna be the Marksman. And then here we can either go into Charge Warrior or Stardust, um, or Charge Warrior or Coral Dragon, it doesn't really matter. We'll go into Charge Warrior first, and then we'll draw a card. It's another Instant Fusion, so that's another card we could set as well. Uh, we could use the one for one at this point, but like I said, it doesn't really matter at this point because we've got a card set already. So now we need to summon the Moulin Glacia. We have got five Waters and Graves, so now they're rocking two less cards. Go Instant Fusion, summon your Norden. Norden, bring back Diva, and then we Synchro again into Coral Dragon this time. And from here, we Synchro up into Zulkin. And there's Zulkin. And here we could uh, then set the other Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion goes off, summons Crystal Wing. And just like that, the Zulkin combo is complete. Alright guys, so I realized I forgot to draw off Coral Dragon. Maybe that would have gotten us another water monster, but that doesn't really matter. Um, the basic point of this portion of the video was to show you guys how the combo works, so forgive me for being an idiot and forgetting to draw, but I hope you guys just understand the basics of the combo. Play, and the thing about this combo in general with the deck, it does not change how the deck plays, like I said earlier. Like, if you, uh, like, you don't need to go first with this deck, that's the thing. Like, this combo is just, like, a combo that I found myself, and... What I realized was, like, it just changed the extra deck, and it really doesn't change how the main deck plays. So if you still want to go second, you know, not gamble on whether or not you're going to open up Diva Instant Fusion, like, you don't have to. You can still go second and try to go for the OTK. If you open up going second anyways, getting a Crystal Wing and a Zulkin uh, and a Moolin, you know, going second with that extra card would always help, too. Um, definitely would be a good going second play as well, but definitely, obviously, a better going first play, even better going first play, so... Yeah, that's going to be it for this deck profile and little combo tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to, of course, leave a like. Leave your comments and thoughts down in the comment section below. Like I said, this is probably going to be one of the last uh, Mermel profiles for a while. Figured I'd do it up big in 4K. So if you guys enjoyed the video, if you did, like I said, leave a like, leave a comment. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for the continued support. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, as always, guys, Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you in the next one.